What's going on guys, Medivar here with Lethal Garage and today we finally have our engine stand. We're going down to pick up a new product and we're gonna uncrate it and put it on the stand. Let's do it. Oh baby. If you guys even know what that is right there, that is America full glory. Men dream about these things. I'm still dreaming. I can't believe this is going to the back of my truck right now. If you guys ever need anything, Eric, Paradise Autos, will help you. Parts department, get you all the glory. And he's a good forklift driver. Look at you, look at, look at him just look set that in there. Let's see if it says on the packing slip. No. No, it doesn't say, I just got part number. 19213580. So, as you can see, I bought myself a pretty inexpensive engine stand off Amazon. Link is down below if you guys are interested in picking up an engine stand. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to assemble the engine stand and we are going to get the block on this stand today hung and let's talk about the motor and everything going in to this bad boy. It's gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna do most of this time lapse, so get ready for some good music, uh, but get ready for some good conversation on what we're doing with the motor and how we're gonna get it going. You had to suffer through watching me build the engine stand. I've dragged over the LS7 bare block. Obviously, it's still in the crate. Gonna go ahead and cut this open. We'll mount this up. The one thing that an engine stand typically doesn't come with is the bolts to mount the motor. So I had to buy these separately. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna uncrate this bad boy. Take the main motor slide off. Bolt it up to the motor. Slide it back on. And we should have a block on a stand and we can then talk about what we're doing to this LS7. Here it is, all aluminum LS7 block, brand new. So this is a bare block basically. <laughs> you get the basic bolts holding in your bottom side. The only thing this has is I believe there's cam bearings in it. That's about it. Outside of that everything else is bare bones need to fill in everything else. It's not a short block or a long block. This is what you would call a bare block. So, see the cam. Ooh, what are we gonna put there? Crankshaft, all sorts of stuff. And I got a phone call. Mounting your LS7 to the engine mount, you have four bolt holes on the back side of the motor. Obviously this is the back. You'll know the front because you'll see all of the water ports all over it and it's recessed for the oil pump and all that. But the mount holes are here and here and then mirrored on the other side. So let's get this mounted. So now that I got the bolts loosely in place, I'm gonna to try to tighten the main bolts up to keep it basically level and then tighten everything down. So I need to tighten the inside bolts and then I'll get the outside bolts. Now we'll get the smaller bolts tightened up. And 
now that we got all the bolts in place, we're going to put the motor on the stand. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go. See, a Joe Blow could put an engine on an engine stand. I think I did an okay job here. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will harass me in the comments below, but hey, first time putting an engine on an engine stand. Got it all set up. Now it's ready to build this bad boy. LS7 Monster. Now let's talk about what we're doing to this motor. The LS7, as you guys know, Nothing in the Lethal Garage stays stock for very long. And the LS7 motor for our second gen build is no excuse to that. And I apologize, there's lots of boxes of parts everywhere. Uh, I'm collecting parts for the beautiful. And a lot of those parts include all the engine parts. And you guys may be wondering, why the heck are you starting on the engine when the car still has tons of work? Well, I wanna get the engine fully operational assembled everything so we could just drop this bad boy in and be good to go and have the car be able to run once we get the suspension addressed and the brakes and there's there there's a lot i'm just so let's just get into the ls7 um so the ls7 it's a it's a motor that i wanted now some of you may be asking why didn't you just stick with the l or the um gosh what, the 454 big block that's in there um it's actually a 468 based on the build that they did and it mainly comes down to weight and sound and weight and more weight. That thing is heavy. That thing is like 680 pounds uh, assembled without the front assembly. Uh, this fully assembled with the front assembly, I think is like under 500 pounds. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I've always wanted an LS7. I just have every since I heard it in a C6 Z06 and then in the Camaro Z28, I'm like, I need one. I need one, I need one, I need one. And I have one, I bought one. I have, well, I have a skeleton of one. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Now, I have quite a few parts for this. I have all the rest of the parts to build a complete motor all on order. And I do wanna give a huge shout out to Paradise Autos. So if you guys don't know, Paradise Chevrolet is where I bought my Camaro, my six gen Camaro, both of them. Uh, and then also every part and piece, everything. I work with them for anything that has to do with GM parts. It's where I'm going for all the parts here and uh, just a big shout out to them. So, and uh, with that being stated, I just literally today placed an order for all the remaining parts and pieces, including the front assembly, water pump, alternator, oil pump, just like everything. Like there's just so many things, lifters, lifter trays, lifter tray bolts, the bearings, like just, it's gonna go on and on. I'm gonna go through a list of everything that we're doing that's gonna be stock, and I'll go through a list of everything that's aftermarket. Um, in a future video, but I mainly wanted to just talk about what the goals are here. Now, being an LS7, we have uh, aftermarket LS7 heads going on the motor. Uh, we do have stock crank um, with stock pistons and rods. We are gonna upgrade the cam. Um, again, the heads are gonna flow better. They're ported, so we should get better flow. It is gonna be a carbureted, so I'm thinking we're gonna go with the Holly Dominator setup and just go big right out the door. Um, the big dominators, they get expensive, like 1,200 um, bucks. I still have no idea what kind of intake we're actually gonna do on this car. We're gonna see what's there. I'm thinking the Holly uh, long tube headers, the Hooker Blackheart setup along with full Hooker Blackheart exhaust. Um, still kind of going back and forth, weighing my choices what's out there, but I really like what Holly's offering out there. Um, but I'm really looking at building this motor to be naturally aspirated carbureted and maybe we'll start with carbureted and maybe we can switch to EFI and go down that path um, kind of change make the project car a true project car and see how it ran before and after and get some varying results um, but all that being stated uh, this is the holy grail motor and, and that's just my personal opinion there's a lot of people out there that run LS7 blocks over the LSX because the LSX is just a big heavy block um, is it a bad block? No, it's a great block if you're running tons of boost, but so is the LS7. So all that being stated, we have an LS7 for the second gen build. I couldn't be more excited for it. Um, this is literally my first motor that I will be building from the ground up. Now, let me caveat that. I have done a lot of work on my motor as of recently. 
uh, in the LT1 motor. Uh, I put my own cam in, did all that upgrade, which is nothing in comparison to a full motor build. And I don't wanna say it's not that hard. It does take some technical experience and a lot of know-how. And I am blessed that I have Mike from Red Barn Racing, who is basically going to probably be standing over my shoulder, if not even putting his hands on this motor as well, um, walking me through, teaching me um, how to properly build the motor, torque to spec, get it all right. I'm super excited about it. And not only that, I'm going to be doing a full video series on everything. So yeah, that's all coming. So that will probably be one of the first things for the second gen series that I'm gonna be doing is basically building the full motor, talk through everything we're doing, including the trans choice, which we have locked in. And um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say exactly what it is yet, but it's all coming. It's it, it's there. So I'm super excited for this. Again, all the parts for the motor are on their way, and we're gonna start assembling this bad boy right away. And you, some of you guys are gonna be like, why? Again, why are you building the motor when you still have so much work on the car? Again, I want to get the proper motor and everything that we're going to do for the car as soon as all the suspension is figured out um, there's a couple things we're looking at right now in the suspension world potentially just replacing all of the suspension for an aftermarket custom setup um, but those are just really expensive and so we've got to save the pennies to make that happen uh, but hey get the ls7 out of the way that's a huge expense uh, for the full drive line with the trans and everything uh, so that way, once that's done, it's knocked off the list and we know we have the power plant to power this bad boy. It's getting the suspension and brakes next and then we'll put a, a crate with a steering wheel and drive this thing. I don't care. I want to get this thing on the road running as soon as possible. And it's ambitious because there is a ton of work. I will say, finally, for the first time, the car has something not metal on the doors. I have the, the cheap top of door frame. <laughs> tops on both sides and it already looks a thousand times better with that being in place uh, there's a lot of work to do obviously I got massive deliveries from OER and classic industries um, even just like the simple things there's so many just small things these are the armrest uh, support brackets that go on the inside of the door you'll see the one on the driver's side is completely missing it sits right there and the one on the passenger side is completely rusted so I'm gonna go ahead and replace that so I got two new ones uh, there's just tons of little parts like this all over including like the trunk I got the the spring mechanism set up for the rear trunk lid like it was broken so I needed to replace it so I got those um, I'm starting to order all the parts and pieces for the interior all the parts and pieces from under the hood all the parts and pieces for the design changes of the body um, are coming in so there's just there's so much I can keep going and going and going but I'm gonna leave it at that LS7's here on the stand I'm super excited uh, again this is the first time I've assembled a stand the first time I put an engine on a stand um, it, anybody could do this you could do it guys if you guys want to do this and get down this path hit that subscribe button, follow. I'm gonna be crafting videos and content that's going through every aspect of this build. Um, the whole drive line, the whole rotating assembly, the whole valve train, like we are gonna build this motor from the ground up and do videos of every step of the way. And I'm super excited to do that. So if you guys are interested, again, smash that subscribe. Likes, comments, shares are always appreciated. If you guys have questions, comments concerns post them down below if i did something completely wrong like wearing sandals which i'll do in every video because i'm super unsafe and i love wearing sandals uh so yeah leave that one out but that's all i got so thanks for checking out the video guys and as always i hope to see you on the road and no i am not leaving the motor uncovered it is completely wrapped and covered to keep dust and dirt off of it so this motor will be good until we build it and once we build it it's basically going to be all sealed up and we'll be good to go